Dr. Baird, thank you so much for meeting with us. Um, I work with students who are trying to figure out how the coronavirus is affecting our communities. And we're hoping you could tell us first just a little bit about your job. What do you do involving COVID-19? So uh, I am a professor at a medical school in Seattle at the University of Washington, and my job is that I oversee all of the clinical laboratories. So that's where we do all the blood testing and uh, other testing that might get done, including the coronavirus testing for the whole University of Washington system. Uh, and actually that we were doing probably about two thirds of the testing for the state of Washington, about 8,000 coronavirus tests every day. Wow, so you have a lot of experience in this area. Um, we have been looking at how the coronavirus spreads from person to person. And we know, we have some evidence that it can get out of people's bodies in droplets when they're talking or breathing or coughing or sneezing. But we weren't sure, we were curious to know if the coronavirus can get out of a person's body when you cry or when you sweat or when you bleed or when you go to the bathroom, is the virus in those droplets? So uh, the, uh, the, the answer depends on which one, which one you're talking about. So we know that there is coronavirus in the eyes, uh, and so there can be some in the tears, although for someone to be infected, they would have to then touch your tears and get those tears into them, into their mouth or their nose somehow, or into their eyes. Um, you asked about blood. What we know about blood is that there's very, very little coronavirus in the blood. So we don't think that blood transmits it very well. Um, you asked about sweat. There's no evidence that there's really much at all in sweat. So we're not worried about sweat. And then poop is the one thing that uh, you did ask about. Oh, pee is another thing. There's, there's essentially none in pee. But in poop, there actually is a little bit of coronavirus in poop. And we still aren't really sure how much of a problem that is. But it is at least theoretically possible that if you were to sort of touch some poop, that's pretty gross. But if you were to do that, you could potentially catch it from that. That's good information for us to have. Um, we were curious, you mentioned a little bit about how the coronavirus can get into our bodies. And we know that if we breathe it in, if it's in droplets in the air and we breathe it in, that it could get in that way. But um, you maybe mentioned some other ways it could get in. So tell us a little bit more about that, please. Yeah, so uh, we, one of the important things that we tell people is don't touch your face. A, a lot of the, the holes in your face, your mouth, your nose, your eyes, um, are, are ways that viruses can get in. Uh, the virus likes to attach to our cells. Those are the, the, the little units that make up our body. And uh, some of the cells the virus can stick to and some they can't. So it would be difficult for the virus to get in your ear. Uh, but it could get in your mouth by eating, like, you know, by getting it on your tongue. It could easily get into your nose if you breathe it in. Or if you touch something and then, you know, pick your nose, uh, it can get into your nose that way. And then also, yes, the membranes, the wet parts of your eyes, um, those, those tissues also can have coronavirus in them and can be infectious. Not wanting, uh, we don't want to touch our faces, but are there other things we could do to help um, prevent getting it into our eyes and nose and mouth like that? Yeah, so wearing a mask actually helps in just reminding you that you shouldn't be touching that part of your body. As human beings, it's hard not to touch your face. You know, I, I, I will probably touch my face or just scratch my, scratch my chin or my nose at some point. We all do that all the time. Um, and that's one of the reasons that the virus transmits pretty well because we can't stop doing that. But that is one of the things that we need to focus on. Um, and then uh, the next thing that we really need to do is we need to wash our hands. Uh, and that is a, 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 a really a important thing to do for really all sorts of diseases that are transmitted between one person to another. Washing hands is one of the most important things that we as doctors can tell people to do. Awesome. Well, we Well, we've heard too that um, maybe we could wash our hands with hand sanitizer. Would that work as well as soap and water to get rid of the virus or kill it? Yes. So hand sanitizer that has alcohol in it, the stuff that smells sort of strong, uh, that actually works really well uh, to kill the virus. And so if you use that in, you know, like the gel and you get it all over and you use that until it's dried off, that's actually very effective. So uh, the, the virus is not uh, all of that stable. It can be destroyed by soaps and hand sanitizers. Well, that's good to hear. We're glad to hear that. The
The yeah. last thing that we were wondering about um, as far as how we could catch the virus or, or how it spreads so easily is that it may be safer to be outside than inside and that maybe the amount of time we spend in a place has something to do with how likely we might be to catch the virus. So could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so it turns out that the, the most people who catch COVID are catching it because of being breathed on or getting droplets out of someone's mouth from one person to another. And uh, when we look at where that happens, it's mostly happening indoors. And so the reasons for that is that those droplets, if you're outside, especially if it's a nice breezy day, they blow away and, and they're just not there in front of you. Uh, whereas if you stay inside and you're really close to someone, those droplets are just going to hang around you for a long time and there's a better chance that you're going to inhale them. The other really important uh, uh, factor, thing to think about, uh, about the virus is that your likelihood of getting it from someone is very closely related to how much virus you get exposed to. If someone coughs one virus on you, just one, one single coronavirus, you're probably not going to get too sick. If someone coughs 10 billion coronaviruses on you, which is possible, then you might, uh, you might get that uh, and, and it could be bad. So the, the dose is what we would say in medicine uh, of, of, of the virus is very, very important. And so there's also ways that we know the, uh, that the dose can be increased. So people yelling, shouting, singing, uh, unfortunately laughing, uh, these are things where lots and lots of stuff comes out of our mouth. And if we're doing that very close to someone indoors, it's much more likely that those droplets are going to then go to the other person. Um, but if we're outside, we can do that, but then they're all just going to sort of float away and we don't have to worry about it as much. It's not that we don't have to worry about it at all. It's just much, it's much safer. Right. And then if I was in a place for longer, I might have more chance of getting more of those viruses on me the longer I'm exposed to somebody. Exactly. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Baird. This was super helpful.